Okay, so let's work on the next layer of what we're going to do here. So if we look real quick, we've got our big tree here that we want to do, and then we've got our rock here. So let's go ahead and make a new layer. And then let's grab the selection tool or the masking tool. And let's go ahead and put it on add to. And then just kind of come along through here and here. off back to the oil brush got this color here I want to go a little bit darker because this is closer something like that the fill tool let's fill both of those like so Control D to deselect. A quick oil, real quick, because I want to sometimes it does that with the selection tool, it leaves a little bit of a halo around the edges. Not sure why, but it does. got that there and then we're going to do this one here so let's come down below create another layer and again we'll go back to the selection tool this time we just use the rectangle because it's quicker we press L and let's just slightly lighter So that brings it a little bit closer, a little bit closer. And you see how that starts giving us the, keeps that perspective going, that atmospheric perspective. So we've got that. And the nice thing about this is, is that if we want to move this, like say we didn't like how that was looking, because I think it should be a little bit lower. Something like maybe that. I'm going to keep just a little bit of this grass here. <coughs> Excuse me. Something like that. Okay. stick with this knife smooth real quick just kind of let it smear in and actually I think I'll switch to three This one, three works really well with pressure. It's almost like you're glazing. It requires just a little bit more um, pressure to lay down some paint, but then just soft pressure lets you really blend it out. And that's what I want. And I want kind of this rougher edge here. Something like that. this color a few spots here and there just a little bit more pressure and 
these little jagged strokes that are then kind of blended in here and there can give us that feeling of kind of bark pulling across here, like maybe some old bark or Now you'll see this texture here. See this here? That's the paint underneath reacting with this. And so you've got that texture. If this is where you want this to be, what I like to do so I'm not fighting this texture is I'll go back and delete this from these layers and take it back down to the canvas. Um, you don't have to do that. You can leave it and then just play around with the canvas some more and go with like something like the thick dry build a little bit more on top of it but I still like to do it when I have this lines right here and like right here because it it, it gives this more of a, of a thin glaze kind of look versus the thick paint kind of look over top of it and so if you're trying to go for a little bit of um wet and wet technique then I would suggest doing that now I'm going to soften this by switching to the number three setting which again is the paint and blend. You can see right here. So you have one, two, three, four. But this will allow me to build up some texture here. More pressure. I can get a little bit more of the paint laid down. So very similar to what I was doing with the quick oils, but um, it adds more texture. And see, this really gives that shaggy bark kind of feel. So I'm just kind of layering this on. And you can, you know, change the size if you want to play with it a little more. So it doesn't look quite as uniform. But that gives us, you know, a nice old wood kind of thing. We'll come back later and add some highlights to it. Maybe add a little bit more darkness here. Like adding in some of this a little bit more of the bluish color to get some reflected light. And just kind of make it sit a little more. Something like that. And by having this light kind of modeled in here, it gives us that feel of light kind of speckling in from the branches and kind of falling across. And coming up to this layer. Because I want this to be a lot closer. I'm going to give some larger paint strokes. very much wet and wet just kind of blending it across Trees are just basically cylinders. 
So you're just trying to get that feel of light circling across it. Like so. Now this is very linear, okay? That's fine for now, because we're going to go back and, and break this up, kind of like we did down here, okay? Okay. I'm going to darken this a little more here on the sides because I want this to kind of vignette everything. So I'm going to switch to, let's turn this knife dry, because I want to pull in some of this edge here and separate it out, because I kind of see how that kind of pushes that back now. That's what I want. As you come in and do this bark and kind of feel of wood, leave gaps, okay? So as you blend the colors around and over each other, leave some gaps here and there. It adds interest. Now if you've got my stencils, you can come in with, you know, any of the water stencils work great, just about. Um, some of the tree ones I have, of course, all the trees, but then there's like old wood and bark, like right here, that you could use if you want to. Um, you know, if you don't feel like you don't have the confidence to sit here and paint it, or you don't feel like sitting there and painting it, because again, remember, stencils are just really good for speeding up stuff. But I find that I really like the waterfall. So I'll turn off the lock size ratio. And I'll bring this over and just kind of quickly streak in. And again, this is my one thing I wish that Rebel would do would be where you could move this and contort that this wasn't so far up here that I could have more control of it down here. It's just a workflow thing more than anything. But like if I bring it up here and I want to twist it, now this is way off the canvas. So I got to move my canvas down. Reselect that just to tilt it. So it's just a, it's a nitpicky thing, I know, but I wish it was something that I could have a little bit more quick control over. Let me grab a little bit of this color. Just kind of tilt this a little bit. Because all I'm trying to do is get the general flow of the tree bark. And see how that starts to lay it in. Okay, so that's a great way to do it. If, Like I said, if you don't feel the confidence of it, use the stencils. If you do feel the confidence of it and you want to save some time, use the stencils. That's what they're there for. It's to help. It's just another tool. Okay. And then over here, again, going to the tools. 
I like to add in the rock texture. Now for this, I'm going to grab this grayish color, this grayish blue. And I'm going to come up a little bit in color and maybe down a little bit in saturation. Come up in, in value, down in hue is what I was trying to say. Now I'm thinking about the light streaming across. So I'm going to give a surface there. And maybe a little bit of a surface here. Because that adds some interest. A little bit around. A bit darker. It's a little too dark, but that's okay. We can fix that. I keep forgetting that it just doesn't like my stylus sometimes. Get rid of it. A little bit larger. Enough streak in. And you can use that to kind of lay down the groundwork. So, if like you're. Especially if you're using the thicker paint. I mean, you can build up the thicker paint with it, like it is. But if you want to kind of use the stencil to get your idea of where the rock is going to go, you can do that. And then come back and lay in some thicker paint strokes. I'm going to change my brush here. Let's go to thick dry. So it gives me a little bit rougher texture. kind of follow some of these edges along. Highlight them. And change the texture. This one gives me a little bit more of a palette knife kind of feel. Like that. Grab a little bit of this dark. Maybe kind of streak it across here a little bit. A little softer here and there. And that will give us that transition that I was talking about where that was a little too harsh. So something like that. E for eraser. A little too. I didn't like how that was sloping off. I wanted to give it a definite edge there. Okay. So now we've got our boulder. We've got that coming across. So now, let me go ahead and save this. Now it comes in where you want to look at stuff and be like, okay. What, um... What do I like? What do I want to change? What do I want to push? You know, as far as design and look and feel. So one thing I could do is I could duplicate this layer, for example. Turn off paint, the uh, pigment, I mean. And let's go to multiply. So that makes that really dark. But if I bring it down to, say, right about there, yeah, maybe 40. That enhances 
the feel of it, so almost like enhancing the exposure of it. So let's see. And it really kind of pulls it forward. I think I like that. So once I do that, merge that down. And maybe here I want to do a similar. And the reason to use the pigment is because it blends better. It gives you a much better blend. Okay, darken that. I kind of like that too. So I think I may bring it down just a little bit. And again, this is something that you'll want to play around with in your version. To be like, okay, do I like that? Do I not? So there we go, some, you know, playing around with the layers there. It really kind of pulls that forward, pushes that back. I like it a little more like that. You may not. If you don't like it, don't do it. Um, I do like it, though. And the downside is I'm losing any idea of where everything was. I need to label all this. is mid-ground, in case you're wondering. It just gives me a quicker way to see everywhere everything is. Okay. So now what I want to do is kind of start pulling some of this stuff together a little bit more. All right. So one thing I need to do is right here, that's a gap that looked kind of weird. All right. So what I'm going to do is, let's see, that is this layer right here. So I'm going to come over to here with my flat oily knife smooth. This is the quick oils. It used to be called acrylics or express oils, I guess I should say. Alt select. And just kind of the 
it's looking so much lighter. So that gets rid of that. Um, one thing I also want to do is between these two, I want to add kind of some mist. We'll grab the airbrush and let's go something like this. Turn off pigment. We can go soft light. Oops, I had a hard light back then. Soft light. Just kind of streak some of this in. Push some of that back a little bit. Okay. Could even come up on top of this one. Whoops. Click. There we go. I'm getting some lag from my system, guys. Sorry. Just kind of pulls you there, I think, a little more. All right. And then up to the very top, I want to pen tool, turn it all the way down. Fountain round, looks really good. Lower this down a little bit. I want to throw in. Is here and there. Now I'm grabbing some of this color back here because I want to have the harmony of pulling that into front and it kind of ties all of that together. Now I like using the pen tool for this. You can use whoops you can pay attention and use the pencil tool, like so. And again, add as much, add as little as you want for that, but it kind of helps seat everything down in there. You can come down behind, it's like on the same foreground log, if you wanted to, and add a few behind the rock, like so. Okay. And that gives you some interesting stuff to look at. You know, some textures and so forth. And I also want to put a few other things in here. Um, so let me come over to here. Let me get rid of that really big brush, because I don't need that. Up to stencils. Go to celestial. I'm gonna go to 
space. Expand that. Because what I would like to do Use the stars to add in some snow. So I've got space. I've got stars, which they're similar, but they're a little different. So something like that, maybe like a first snowfall. You can also do control T and kind of like stretch them a little bit and then rotate so that that kind of elongates them and gives them they're all kind of going in a direction. Like so. Gives you a little bit of motion. Nothing drastic. So if you do that, that's where you can then come in if you want with like say the one of these, you know, it doesn't really matter what brush, but like say if you wanted to go with the knife texture brush, you could come in and you could take and start adding some snow drifted up into limbs like so again totally optional don't have to do it if you don't want to you could add a little bit of snow onto here so maybe that's just starting to settle in on it you know maybe you want just a touch of it here and there Find some of these ridges that stick to it. Pile it up, kind of drift it across it. Something like that. Maybe a little bit down in here. Like so. Now you could put that behind your grass, like that. So that starts to give you that snowy feel. Like, you know, maybe it's the first snow of the season or the first real snow or something like that. And it's starting to really come down and gather up quickly. Like one of those wet slushy snows. You know. So this is where you can really tweak it around. But it's got the nice feel to it of stuff starting to really kind of come down and stick and so forth. All right. So, totally up to you. You know, play around with it as much as you want to to give that feeling. Um, if you have my stencils, you could even do other stuff like uh, if your system doesn't lag like mine's doing right now. It's not Rebel, it's, it's my system. You know, so maybe we want to have something like this guy. So the nice thing about that, that can give you some instant scale, you know. Maybe this guy is crossing through here. So we go with something like this, and let's put him on his own layer. Scrunch him in real quick. This is where you can use that texture to kind of give that hint of fur. So maybe something like that. Something like this. A little shadow.
back to something a little bit lighter. So maybe he's starting to get some snow on him. stencil off. Just kind of three to kind of glaze in. Kind of dry brush in some it's think about the shape of his face. His eye be right about here, like that. Maybe a little bit of shadow under there. Again, spend as much or as little time as you want. Don't put it in if you don't want it. Um, something like that. Maybe grab the pencil. But out of the stencil. Something like that. Okay, so now we know where he's at. We need to put him behind the tree, like so. Now we need to give him a shadow. So I can grab some of this here. And go to like maybe the chalk or something. Put a reflective light on him. You know, something like that. Okay. And so you can use those to get some really nice atmospheric, something a little different looking. Um, the only thing I might do through here would be to maybe select him. Okay. And see how we can see these trees. So it would be to come down through here and just delete those out from under him because that really kind of solidifies his position being in front I could do the same with this so if I just switch to E and just kind of go across that kind of breaks that up kind of the same here just selectively erase and it gives me a different texture come up here to the grass and just kind of erase it and if I race in the direction that whatever is laying on top it just kind of blends in the texture so I don't have to be precise with it, in other words. Okay. And then I can go around and look for things like that. Like if there's something I just don't like the texture of bleeding through, or if I want to make a little change in something or whatever. 
gives me the availability because I'm in layers to do that. Okay. Just a smidge. Texture on this guy. Pull some of that together. Just kind of tweaking the color here a little bit. That kind of softens and pulls out a little bit more and gives you that little interest. And then, really, it's just a matter of what do you want? You know, how do you want it to look? Do you want to add in more animals? You know, do you want to add in some birds? Because I think sometimes having some white birds or some darker birds can be interesting. Be darker up here, though. Add some interest. So I think that's a good stopping point, guys. I think that gives you a good idea of some things you can try. Um, I hope you got a lot of techniques out of this workshop on ways to layer stuff, ways to play with texture, ways to play with light uh, and composition and thinking about how you want stuff laid out. So if you have questions, of course, just ask and I'll see you on the next one.